Last week's video I showed you how to turn this multi-axis or eccentric uh, twig pot or, or weed pot. It was a lot of fun. This week I'm going to show you how to turn something to put in it and that's these uh, little flowers from green wood. It's a skill builder. I think you'll enjoy it. Anytime you're cutting a round object on a bandsaw, be sure to support it. I'm using this little V-block with a, uh, uh, a runner. So we're going to uh, evaluate where the center is coming through the green wood. You don't, you don't want the pith coming right through the middle of the stem. Uh, you want at least an eighth inch of way. So if it's not centered, you're going to turn it a little bit off center. So mark it maybe at least an eighth of an inch and then turn it round to a rest to make sure that it's not going to bump. And ideally the piece is large enough where you can still put a tenon on it to, to chuck it. Uh, if it's a little bit off center, you might have to use a smaller set of jaws if you don't have a larger piece. And of course, check for the chuck size. So now we're going to take off the center and put on a chuck. In this case, I'm using my 35 millimeter jaws because the piece was too small to get a, uh, a tenon on, on it. Uh, because it was off center a little bit. Tighten it up real good because it's green wood. Again, turn it, make sure it's going to clear. And then we're going to get a spindle roughing gouge to knock off the bark, just waste away some of the wood. We're going to kind of work in stages from the right hand side back to the left hand side, so we're just going to concentrate on where the top of that flower is going to be first. I want to make the top of the flower maybe three quarters of an inch. You can tell from that live center that's just about three, almost three quarters of an inch. That kind of gives you a visual gauge of how far to take it down. Now I'm using a spindle gouge, almost like a skew. Just riding the bevel, taking a cut. Now I'm going to face it off and, and hollow it out a little bit, the, the flower. Brace it with my finger in case it tries to escape back on me. And just start the entry cut with the with the bevel almost perpendicular and then ease it around toward the center. And you can go as deep as you want depending on your design. and sand it because you're not going to be able to come back to it. Go ahead and sand that inside because now we're going to work on the outside of the flower. And I'm going to bring up uh, a, a little bit of padding. Okay, now I'm going to cut down from the edge. Now I'm going on blind faith of how deep I cut it, but I didn't cut it too deep. I've got to cut it back a lot further on the back side. Alright, now I'm going to go back to the, the uh, my, my half an inch spindle gouge. It's just working back maybe an inch at a time. Start wasting some wood. Sharp tools, light touch. Or my tool rests just a little bit. I'm having to raise my elbow up too high, so I know it's too high for this tool. And as I start getting down here a little ways, I'm going to start bringing up some tailstock support. And I have just a little bit of a detail somewhere near the base. I have just a, a little bit of a detail, a little cove maybe, that adds just a little bit of interest. Now to, to get down there and do that, 
I'm going to use a a quarter inch detail gouge, which is uh, shallow fluted. Let me turn on a little more light here. Okay, just going to come down here. Perpendicular to the wood, just turn a little cold. We want to come back here and make this detail just a little bit sharper, more defined. Slice in from the back. It's just a fun project. And probably before I go too much further, I probably ought to sand it. I'm going to use only 400 grit. I'm going to limit myself to 400 grit on this except when I'm getting rid of some tool marks on the stem, in which case 120 will get rid of it real quick. And just hold that over, just getting that cold a little bit. And I think I I don't have to bring up tailstock support for a while. And I'm going to come back here to start reducing wood. This particular tool is almost a halfway between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. And you want to cut toward the tail, toward the headstock or the tailstock, but mostly the, the headstock. Whenever I feel like I'm beginning to lose that thing wobbling a little bit, that's when I need to bring up the uh, Tail stock. It's not wobbling, but it will in a minute now. I'm just using this almost like a skew. All right, I think it's the point where I might think about wobbling a little bit, so I'm going to pull that off, bring this in, and just ease it in just enough to prevent it from wobbling. That's about all I want. Just to prevent from wobbling. I'm going to bring this back in and come in here again, using use this almost like a skew with the handle tilted forward, riding the bevel, come straight into the tailstock. No, no, no radial pressure at all. Any tool marks, like I say, can be cleaned up very quickly with some uh, 120 grit. Pinch between your fingers. Bring it down just a little bit more before I sand. Just to barely come off that bevel. Alright. Now I'm going to be very careful and just pinch some, some 120 grit. I think I'll take off a tear off a little tiny piece, so like this, where I just, just pinch it and run it and keep it moving back and forth, get rid of any tool marks. Smooth it out. Probably won't do any finer uh, sanding than that. Now I'll come back and take down some more. This green wood cuts like butter. with the grain. You notice, all right, ride the bevel, just roll it over until it's just riding the bevel on that edge. And then roll it over until it starts cutting. No more. You're not scraping. This is just a real fine cut, almost like using a skew. Now the other option is to use a skew. So, I've got a half inch skew. I could bring that in, maybe provide just an equal amount of support on the back side. Just take a little bit at a time. No real pressure. I'm not really pressing with my finger, I'm just supporting it. It's just not any, it, not as hard as it might look. 
Yeah, is that a little bit of a piss I'm seeing there? I hope not. I think it's all right. Yeah, it looks like the pith is, is off at least an eighth of an inch, so I think I'll be all right. Bring this back a little bit. Waste some more wood. Whoops. I think I heard it crack. Too much pressure and, oh gracious, looky here. Got a tiny crack, but I think... Yeah, I, I had uneven pressure around the edge. I should have used a, a cone center. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put a few drops of CA on there to hold it in place. And if I got a little crack in it, I got a little crack in it. Put a few drops in there. And then maybe pinch it. that dry. I should have done this to begin with. I failed to realize how thin it was and I'm putting pressure on the outside edge and I really want to press it, have it press right down the middle with just a, a little bit of uh, either cloth or paper towel. Uh, so I'm going to fold this over just enough where the point is not going to be poking into the wood. Let me hit that with the accelerator so I don't get this paper stuck to it, in case it's not already dry. Right down the middle. And as this turns, it's almost turned, so I think I can turn it maybe a quarter of a turn and lock it down. Just turn it just a little bit until it starts to spin. And then I'm going to lock it down. And then I'm back to where I was. Okay. slowing down so I'm just going to loosen this and just give it just a fraction of a turn. Come back here. Straight down. Again, rolling it over. Just cut it with the edge. Slowing down a little bit, just, just a little bit more. Not so much that it'll bow or whip, just enough to support it. Now that I've got the bulk of the wood, I'm going to go back to the using this, the, the skew with one hand with it underneath my, my elbow. Um, For really cutting it down, I'm going to use a half inch skew and I'm supporting it with the finger on the other hand just to give it equal support. Uh, not really doing any pressing, just just balancing that that cut as I go straight down to the uh, to the headstock and just get it get it thin, riding that bevel. Very light pressure, sharp tool. And then you're going to pinch a little 120 sandpaper, move it back and forth, and that'll get rid of any tool marks that might have been left or any slight uh, differences in in diameter. This will clean it up a little bit. Just keep it moving. Just pinch it between so you're not shifting it, uh, pressing on it. Equal pressure on both sides. Waste away a little more wood so I can come back and do a little bit more. Use the spindle gouts, do the bulk of the wood. All right, let's come down here and just crisp that up just a little bit. Come in there and pin it down just a little bit. Okay. And then 
I want to add that little bit of a detail on the back end. Make this one a little bit longer. I got the wood. Alright, come in with a skew again. crisp detail there. I guess I could make it cold just a bit deeper and maybe make this bead a little more pronounced on this side. that you can see it's in details, all I want to do. So if someone pulls a flower out, they'll see it. Alright, now I'm going to part it off. I think I'm going to slow it down. Now when you get this thin, you want to slow it down very slowly for the same reason. You don't want to just snap this. If any pressure on here, you bring this to a halt faster than this. You can tolerate and it's liable to snap it off. So. Bring it down to you know, part, usually part off about a thousand. And I'll use this detail spindle gouge for that. Just, I can make it a little bit longer, I think. I actually need a little larger tool for that. Come back in with this half inch, or this three eighths rather. I like it kind of. A little bit of a bump on the end. It'll come down to a little bit of a point. And then touch that with a bit of sandpaper. Now, I'm going to come in here and just slice toward the, the headstock. Now as I get ready to part it off, and I need to support the flower, and I can't really have it on here. I've got a little, little trimmer in my left hand, which makes this a little bit harder, but we'll do this one hand, I think you can almost see this. You guys know how much I'd lo I love to teach or I wouldn't be making these videos. So I, I do teach lessons in my shop. If you live in the Atlanta area, you got relatives in the Atlanta area, or you just, you're just traveling through, uh, check it out. Details on my, my webpage. Uh, if you enjoyed this project, you can step up to one a little more challenging, and that's turning a, a, a podlet. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.